this week is going to pretty much be a little bit of talking about the events that have been going on this past week with Charleston, um, as well as a bill that's currently in the California, well not a bill, it's a proposition, a ballot proposal that's you know, currently being authored by some dickwad in Orange County. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about really today is just kind of some um, local news, I guess you could kind of say. So we're going to kind of, um, because the events that happened, there, there was an event, a couple of events that happened uh, locally in my community that I think deserve to at least be addressed. And I think it'll kind of make for a interesting little broadcast video this week, considering it's kind of pretty organized into, into that, into three different categories, national, state, and local. So, you know, we're going to just, we're going to try that today. So, um... The first thing I'd officially like to talk about is the issue that was going on in Charleston. Now, as you may remember, on Wednesday, the um, the 21-year-old gunman Dylan Roof went into a house, into a church, a house of worship of prim primarily all African Americans, sat down f with them for an hour before getting up, s stating essentially that you know, that black people were raping, you know, white women and were responsible for the issues with America today and then opened fire on them. And then we apparently have recently had f more, have had uh, photos which will be provided in the description of him burning the U.S. flag, holding the Confederate flag, of him pointing guns at, um, pointing guns at the camera, and so much that his freaking roommate knew that he was planning this attack. Not so much that he was just, that he was just making a bunch of insane fucking talk and just, you know, sounding like a, like a crazed, you know, delusional person, you know, he wasn't just thinking about it. This guy actually, the, the roommate actually knew for six months that this man was going to commit a heinous crime and did nothing to stop it. And it makes me wonder why he isn't being arrested, isn't being investigated, isn't being at least talked to in some way. And then as well as that, it's the fact that Dylan Spr um, Dylan, Spr Dylan Roof didn't, uh, it was carted out in a bulletproof vest, went peacefully, and was not fucking shot by police. Because had this been a black gunman, he most likely would not have been made, have made it out of the house alive. Just thought I'd throw in a piece of white supremacy on the police there just for the sake of argument. But let's at least focus in on the real issue here. Who is Dylan Roof? Well, apparently it does not even appear Roof is actually from Charlotte itself. He's actually from an outlying rural area. But in his man, uh, manifesto that was picked up, he even wrote, and I quote, that we have no skinheads, excuse me, we have no skinheads, no real KKK. And we, well, someone has to have the bravery to take it to the real world, and I guess it has to be me. Those were the direct words stated by Dylan Roof. He literally goes to the jump head here that no, that, that there's no real KKK, there's no real skinheads. Yet at the same time, there's also been inklings that he may have had some involvement with some white supremacist organizations. Now, of course, one of the organizations that 
the, the two prominent organizations that came out both in support, one in support and one, uh, you know, declaring condolences, you know, false sympathies, as I put it, for the families was the pioneers of Europe and, the, or pioneers for Europe and Stormfront. Now, Pioneers for Europe outright supported Dylan Roof, and of course there may be, you know, he in some ways may have had dealings with them, maybe he didn't. Then there's the, the really suspicious thing of Stormfront, which, by the way, if anybody remembers or has watched my videos, will remember that they called me anti-white, that I was, accused me of promoting white genocide, and that I was basically a race traitor. You know, those crazy bastards. Stormfront came out and essentially was sending their condolences to the families, but for the reason that they feared an attack on white people and gun rights which I've already spe talked about and won't go into you know, very f much in this video, but obviously your gun rights are going to be protected, one, because you've got guns, two, because it would require all the states and Congress's approval, and three, you're just insane. And an attack on white people, Dylan Roof tried to start a race war, and it was unsuccessful, just like all other white supremacist sort of bullshit, you know, terrorist acts to start race wars and stuff like that, because they talk about race wars are coming, race wars are coming, and because no race war ever, ever occurs, they believe that they have to take it on themselves to provoke attacks or just, in this case, just commit heinous fucking crimes. I mean, there's really no no oppression of white people, really. Unless, of course, you're talking about, you know, working class, but even at that, they still enjoy a fair, number of, a fair amount of privilege. White people are not an oppressed group. White people are a very privileged group, for the most part. White people are very, you know, also hold a very colonizer and oppressor sort of mentality and a very strong first world is mentality white people are also tend to be very libertarian very you know very liberal and very conservative but they don't really take on a whole lot but and the problem is is that also a lot of white people don't take on a lot of revolutionary action so with that being said there most of the white community is just seep down between the lines of left uh, of liberal and conservative and for the most part that's what makes up their you know their they basically just make up the bourgeois however there are a certain number of white people who don't follow revolution nor bourgeois you know sort of mentality and basically have a very you know ra uh, right wing radical and just plain retarded sense of understanding of the world and think that it's, you know, and for some reason think it's okay to go out try committing violence against people that aren't white because they seem to think that for some reason there's some sort of oppression going on and that's their justification for their white supremacy. I also love the people that also claim white, you know, white pride and what, you know, all that sort of crap, and then wonder why they're stigmatized. It's not so much that you can't have pride in who you are, it's more the fact that it's m most people that are, that have pride in their race are typically white supremacists and white separatists and white nationalists. That being said, it's kind of one of those things that be, that white pride is also kind of redundant, considering that white people really shouldn't necessarily don't necessarily need to have pride. Pride is primarily a concept of people that that of 
you know, being proud, being happy with oneself, being proud of oneself, obviously, but usually in the, uh, but are fighting for some sort of rights for they're fighting for some sort of, you know, equal opportunity. They're fighting for basically their fair share of power and because they don't have the privilege they don't have the sort of different things like that so people who are african american might have you know black pride people who are latino might have latino pride people who are lgbt plus might have obviously might have pride and parades and things like that to celebrate who they are white people don't necessarily need to have pride because white people are already the colonizer they are the oppressor they're the ones that hold the fair amount of privilege and power in society that being said there's really not much of a need for a pride sort of movement now if you're proud to be white that's one thing it, it, but if you know if you're not a fucking neo-nazi skinhead twat bag that's one thing but the problem is is that you can understand a little bit why there is so much stigma now me i do not personally care for pride in the white community because for those exact reasons I am not proud to be white, I just accept that I am white and accept the fact that I have, you know, that I do have privilege and that I do have, so, you know, things like that. I check my privilege. But at the same time, I don't let that influence me or anything else. In fact, it probably it deters me from being, from the, from being anywhere near prideful in the color of my skin because it deters me away from even focusing on the color of my skin because I am too busy fighting for the rights of people who don't have the rights and privileges that I do that don't have the same you know that don't get receive the same treatment that I do that get passed up for jobs that I you know that I can get and that's not fair to them that's why I promote a revolutionary agenda because as a person who's already got privilege and power it is pretty much a one of those things that you're trying to create a system of bringing and incorporating people of all races all sexual orientations all religions all ethnicities nationalities all you know and you know these different movements and stuff like that together to try to you know to basically say okay we are all equal fuck our skin color fuck our ethnicity fuck our religion all that sort of crap we are all equal and we should all be treated as equal thus let's move forward on that and that's essentially what revolution what you know how those are that's kind of the the sparks of revolution right there, there there's obviously a much more convoluted and complicated situation than that but that's the main point now, white supremacy and white pride and all that sort of bull crap that we see that comes out of people like Dylan Roof and Stormfront and all these assholes, they're primarily in it not just because they're they're in it one because they think that for some reason that they were given a that being white is like some sort of God given gift and that for some reason that they deserve to hold to hold or gain more power and that they deserve to you know that they basically think that they're given the divine right to rule which is a very eurocentric and very fucking racialist thing this sort of thing to say not only that the fact that a lot of these idiots are also very xenophobic homophobic and just and islamophobic and as well as that anti-semitic kind of leads to that whole point that yeah, the people that ha want to have white pride, eh, you're kind of teetering on, on that stigma. So that's why a lot of people choose not to associate with it. And there's a lot of good reasons for that. But of course I'm digressing away from the main point here. Dylan Roof committed a heinous act in the name of white supremacy, white pride, white nationalism, whatever you want to call it. 
what's and what's funny is that Stormfront basically was sending false condolences. Well, you can I call them false sympathies, but yeah, they were sending condolences to the family in the form of false sympathies, mainly to prop continue to propagate their you know neo-Nazi agenda for the same reason that Pioneers for Europe also was supporting Dylan Roof to promote their Nazi, their neo-Nazi and fascist agenda. But the real point that I'd like to make here is the fact that one is outright supporting him while the other one seems to be trying to do a lot of what they can to distance themselves from them. Now I said earlier in the video, at the start of this video, that Dylan Roof may have, uh, that he may have had anglings with Pioneers for Europe. Maybe he also had, you know, because they outright supported him, maybe that was, there's a reason for that. And then again, on the other side, he could have, there might also be a reason why Stormfront seems to be drastically trying to minimize their involvement with him and pretty much trying to come out and why they shockingly came out to give condolences to the families. Because given that the families were African American and this is a white supremacist organization, giving sympathies and and condolences to families that have been shot when basically you advocate the very genocide of anybody that's not white and quote unquote Protestant, well, Christian, you know, Protestant, whatever you want to say, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, it kind of just seems a little bit fishy that all of a sudden you're frigging giving condolences to people. I mean, you know, it's welcomed, I guess, but it's kind of awkward is the word probably to use for that. It just really is. And so there might be some and given the fact that they're only doing it because they fear retaliation on whites and gun rights and stuff like that, they're not really doing it to be supportive or anything like that. They're just doing it, you know, because they want to cover their own ass. And so that's the main point I wanted to make on that. Now, but it is pretty much interesting to note that this young man had a very white supremacist manifesto that he had a very you know a strong white supremacist line viewpoint and just frankly a hatred you know of of these you know of these individuals this kid the, not kid this young man went into a house of worship and shot nine people in cold blood one of them was a U.S. Senator. And while I obviously don't support Democrats or Republicans for political reason, revolutionary and political reasons, it's still you're going after a government official. And that's kind of terrorism. In fact, that should be labeled as terrorism. You killed an innocent government official in cold blood and I it just that's one of the things that really irritates me is that the media and the police aren't charging this young I haven't really seen the police report but from what I'm gathering this young man hasn't even been charged with any form of terrorism he hasn't been charged with you know he hasn't I don't think he's even been charged so much in in the killing of a government official he's just been charged with the murder of nine people and I find that just sickening so I, it, it we, we could you know go on this spiel about you know white supremacy and you know racism and hatred and all that sort of crap all night long but the point being is that this young man you know had a very far right leaning and it appears that he may have had inklings not say, nothing has been officially confirmed but there has been inklings that he may have been involved with white, uh, white supremacy forums and stuff like that so it's one of those things we have to really take it you know with a, each little piece of information we get with a grain of salt 
but this young man does at least for the time being looks like he had a very very far right leaning and was very disturbed and just that pretty much all we can say is that his this white supremacist ideology is what has contributed to the deaths of nine people and so th there's just really not more to go on at that point it's just at the end of the day this needs to be investigated fully and this needs to be actually you know th this needs to be nipped in the bud frankly because I this heinous crime just cannot go unpunished and this young man needs to receive the death penalty in my opinion this young man needs to be taken out into the middle of the fucking woods and shot and frankly I think that the per people that ought to that, that ought to pull the damn triggers the people I think that personally you know I think there should be a firing squad put together and this young man should be shot by the members of the family of the family members he killed this young man needs to be put to death the white supremacists that influenced him need to be put to death white supremacy itself both from the individuals from a com from communities from law enforcement from government needs to be put to death because this pride in race sort of bullcrap this racial supremacy is bullshit it's dangerous and it's fascist and it has to be put down it has to be contained before it before it basically spreads as a cancer and frankly you know it's just it has no place in a modern and civil and so-called civilized society. So, with that, I'm going to just kind of move on because I feel like I've yacked enough about it. And I feel like Charlotte's pretty much been, you know, spoken about enough by both me and other YouTubers and other political commentators and everything else. I you guys have enough information to go on it's been beaten to death so um, what I'm gonna move on to next is um, this thing called the Sodomite Suppression Act now some of you may have already heard about this if you live in California you may have definitely heard about this um, and if you're from in the LGBT plus community or outright support it and follow shit going on with it, you probably have heard about this. Now, this Orange County lawyer, and I use that term loosely for obvious reasons you're about to understand, is this man who has very evangelical Christian values, has named uh, Matt McLaughlin, has authored a ballot proposal calling for essentially for the genocide of anybody who is homosexual transgender blah you know etc he's he literally the bill states that anybody caught in same-sex sexual activity should be quote put to the uh, you know, it should be basically shot. According to the bill, I'll try to bring it up word for word. Actually, here, um, the Atlantic states that the initiative quote, which refers to homosexuality as a monstrous evil and an, an abominable crime against nature, would ban communicating messages of tolerance to minors, uh, bar gays and lesbians or anyone who voices acceptance from holding government jobs or public office and authorize mass murder of lesbians and gays. Now, the exact wording of the, the bill um, basically states that they would be, that, that gay people would be shot in the head or by any other convenient method. 
And then the part where it also states about how it would bar people who are LGBT plus from gaining public office. Now, obviously, this is something that's not uncommon because this is something that's seen in a lot of like very Republican and very Southern state, and even very Southern states like Texas and other places. But then the law goes one step further, in which basically, and not just basically, it outright violates the First Amendment right to free speech when it basically states that homosexual propaganda, basically anybody that would outright support LGBT plus equality, same-sex marriage, gay rights, all that sort of stuff, would be fined up to one million dollars or more and or banished from the state. So in other words, your because of your fucking outrageous fundamentalist sort of mentality, you would out you would promote the genocide of gay people, of lesbians, of bisexuals, transgenders, etc. And then you would censor the speech by making a fear mongering sort of fine and punishment of by you know of punish this punishment of fining people or even banishing them from the state because they happen to either be LGBT plus or support LGBT equality. So basically you're just advocating Nazi style law pretty much because that's exactly what the, what this law is this is exactly what Matt McGlawan is actually supporting he is supporting outright neo-nazi sort of fascist law by going out and stating that we should round up gay people mass murder them and then outlaw any sort of speech defending their rights that is outright fascist. That is outright... That, that is neo-Nazism to the T. I mean, that is really no different than what Hitler did to the Jewish people and then a German person coming along and wanting to defend their rights, but then they would be fined or executed for, their, for, for what they just said. I mean, that is exactly what went on during the Nazi regime. And let's also not forget the fact that the Nazis also executed about 2 million homosexuals during the freaking Holocaust. And of course the people that defended their rights were silenced by way of fine, banishment, or execution. So essentially you're advocating creating an Aryan state, Mr. McLaughlin, because, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that not what the Nazis did? Honestly, I don't really understand what comes across these people's minds and stuff like that when they actually think that this would be a good thing. Like, he's literally trying to put forward biblical sort of nonsense, forgetting about a certain thing called separation of church and state, which, by the way, is also in the Constitution. The idea that you want to ban people from promoting homosexual propaganda is a violation of the constitutional First Amendment free speech. And by basically act, you know, asking for the you know, genocidal murder and torture of anybody that's LGBT plus is pretty much you know, up there with dictatorial tyranny. But apparently your sky daddy and your fucking little savior that, you know, got, you know, BDSM'd up there on a couple of wood planks apparently told you that this was okay. Dude, you need to fucking be forcibly medicated and thrown in the hooskow. Personally, I would suggest a gulag, but, you know, we don't have a technical gulag. But, 
the insane nature of this law itself is just is absolutely heinous now thankfully this law does not look like it will gain enough signatures to pass but uh, just as a defense, Attorney General Kamala Harris has already stepped forward in which she is planning to uh, to try to block the bill and try to get it, uh, try to block it from making it to being making it to the ballot. So essentially, she's trying to you know have it uh, have a you know federal judge in the state toss the toss this ballot out on the grounds that it is unconstitutional now a lot of people are also saying that you know her defense is weak and everything like that but i think that to call it unconstitutional is definitely an understatement and frankly anybody in who is in their right state of justified mind will take a look at this bill and realize yeah, this violates the Constitution in so many ways, and it should not even be put to a fucking referendum. Because anybody who lets or allows this fucking bill to go forward is just as much of a fascist and just as much of a douchebag as the guy that authored it. And let me also, while I'm on the subject of people in the legal system, point out Matt, Mc Matt McLaughlin himself. The fact that this guy is even a lawyer is freaking laughable. The idea that this man is allowed to fucking practice law, which I believe constitutes knowing constitutionalism and knowing pretty much the law inside and out and right from wrong, and the fact that you literally just forget all of that to post this. You literally are calling for the genocide of millions. You're calling for the fining and banishment of people for simply voicing their opinion. Basically to silence opposition to your hegemonic fundamentalist regime and you don't seem to understand as a lawyer that this violates every fucking civil, state, and federal constitutional and legal parameter. You don't seem to understand that this fucking... It, this is freaking insane. That it violates even the very core foundations of this nation to keep this nation a separate but equal nation, separate from the church and the state. But yet you are trying to fundamentally override that by creating a theocratic state that would persecute hand just scores of people and banish and fine millions for simply having an opinion. I mean, let's really put it into perspective. If this were to actually become law of California, or m even more scary, the law of the land, then really, that, that it would really become a neo-Nazi fucking regime. Because you were calling for the murder of millions. You're to talk about literally rounding up people and shooting them. And then to bar people from even speaking about uh, about even uttering LGBT equality that's fucking insane so yes this is one of those laws that's just it's scary and it's horrible you know and, and it's absolutely just mind boggling to think that anybody would co-author such an such an such a document of evil, but essentially that's what this is. It's a I you can firmly quote that on me. You can take that if you want. It is a document of evil. It is a writing of evil. 
this is a man of very sinister and evil mentality who as a lawyer doesn't even seem to understand the difference between the Bible and the Constitution. Frankly, to even the, the fact that this man is has this sort of thing, it should be considered almost a manifesto of, that much like any of the other crazed lunatics that we've had that have mass murdered people like Dylan Roof for instance this man should be should be institutionalized on the grounds that he want of making essentially what is I believe terrorist threats and threats against others threats of of murder this guy should be on up on a loo of charge charges you know, and it just, just the very fact that he's a lawyer, he, this man should at least, at the very least, be disbarred. He should be banned from practicing law in any aspect. He should be, he should be the one banned from public office. It's just insane. Basically to state that, that anybody who's LGBT plus should be barred from public office, should be killed, that anybody that supports them should be fined, banished, and, ba and be barred from public office. Because that's another thing that this law states. LGBT plus activists would basically be barred from holding public office. So, and part of that law is, is that the law could not be overturned or parts of it amended or you know, declared on constitutional, unless it was presided over by a, essentially by a Christian court and by a non, you know, homosexual court. So, in other words, you want a biased theocratic fucking regime. Again, so, Mr. McLaughlin, you're wanting a Nazi regime. I mean, this is pretty much almost the most vague and indirect way for a extremist right winger to basically say that they want nazism this is this is pretty much way right below that the only next step, logical step for them is to outright fucking say yeah i support nazism that is the only logical thing that they have left to do because the fact that this man has fucking gone this far to has go, literally gone to the fact of actually authoring a proposition to do this 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 is a man that obviously supports genocide this is a man that obviously supports a fascist regime this is a man that 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 obviously believes in theocratic totalitarianism. This is a man who's obviously fucking deranged. This is a man that's so f caught up in his fundamentalist views. And then we wonder why there's certain groups and military studies and, you know, these different parameters within our own country that have gone out and called evangelicalism the most hate, the most common threat, the most dangerous threat to our country, they're right. And this fucking proves it. This fucking pro ballot proposal proves it. That the fundamentalist right, that the evangelical and right-wing douchebags are some of the most dangerous individuals facing us today. America has not seen a level of fascism in this country since the days of the fucking war. And it's just absolutely... It, it's quite frankly bone-chilling that these individuals are even allowed to walk freely in our society. Because frankly, if this was a Muslim 
that was advocating this sort of bull crap, he would be fucking brought up on terrorism charges and would be locked in Guantanamo the next day. But it's okay because this person is a white fucking Christian. So that's the one thing I'd also like to point out with that one is the fact that there's this utter fucking hypocrisy amongst our society that this man is allowed to spew his own messages of hate and not have to pay a consequence. Matt McLaughlin, you are a fucking asshole. You are a fucking fascist. And you are, frankly, a man that is not deserving of any public office, should not even be have to be given this sort of recognition. Your bill needs to die. You need to be disbarred. And you need to be put in an institution. And to anybody that supports this fascist law, anybody that signed it, anybody that that supported him, funded him, or in any way contributed to his law or to his proposition, you are just as guilty and fascist as he is, and you too do not deserve to be around in this society. So, moving on from that point, I'd like to touch for this video, and I'll make this as quick as I can before we finish up. There was a murder in Northern California in the town of Fairfield. Actually, there was a couple of deaths that occurred. One was a shooting in the, in the town. Now, this town, by the way, has become very... Um, there's been a lot of drug and gang violence and just a lot of violence in general that has been increasing in the city for quite quite the longest time. And, appar and apparently an uh, individual had shot another individual about three times and the person had sustained some pretty critical injuries. Now it wasn't even you know it's not even really known what the argument was about. It the point that I'm just trying to make really quickly and why I'm even bringing recognition to it is because I find it's really interesting that people can't freaking learn to use their words and can't learn to actually get along with one another that they actually have to be so brazenly, you know, over masculine waving guns around and stuff like that to make themselves feel like they're more badass, more macho, more safe. I mean, the people that go around waving those around and trying to in put fear and intimidation into others are frankly just very scared and immature beings. And sadly, there's a lot of these people that never really have evolved from that, from their, from their youth. I mean, it, you've got 20, late 20 and 30 and even 40 year olds walking around, you know, you know, acting all thug and gangsta. And it's like, you should have put away those childish sort of, sort of symbols a long time ago. You know, it's one of those things that there's an old, an old quote. And I forget exactly who said it. Who said, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I spoke as a child, etc., etc. But when I grew up, I gave up childish things. And that's essentially what life is about. Learning to grow and mature and become a, you know, you know a real person in society... And unfortunately, not a lot of people. There's some people that just don't grow out of that. You know, you can have revolutionary views and be mature. You can have revolutionary views and be immature. You can be part of the fucking bourgeois and be, you know, mature and be fucking bourgeois and immature. And in this case, we see a lot of these people that are very bourgeois 
and commit acts of immaturity. I mean, these sort of things, these these senseless murders of people over petty disagreements, over, you know, over money, over, even over fucking drugs and stuff like that, is immature fucking behavior. It's like, if you can't learn to have a honest conversation with somebody and learn to deal with things in your own way, then you really need to start reevaluating your own maturity level and you really need to grow the fuck up because people that you know because by killing innocent people over stupid petty disagreements is fucking retarded and to even and to continue waving around guns and stuff like that to people that try to impart this sort of behavior to you is even more fucking retarded and the very idea that you go around waving guns around and trying to act all tough and macho and hood, as it's called, to somehow reevaluate your manliness or your toughness, you are neither manly nor tough. You are a scared little child and you need to grow up. Now, moving away. Now, I'm going to state one more thing that happened in this town. I'm going to. Uh, another fatality that happened. A 16-year-old was killed in a car crash um, along a main drag in the northern part of this city. The same city, by the way. And it it's, appears to be that one of the individuals, either the 16-year-old or the 44-year-old, had been driving recklessly and um, the you know, one thing led to another and there was a hideous car crash. But a 16-year-old has lost their life due to this. Someone that most likely just recently got their license this past year, that's in high school, you know, just, and has a family that loves them, has had all of that taken away. A family has lost their child. They've lost, you know, they've they're in grief right now and another person is fighting for their life it's just really sad these are all sad stories these are all stories to just take into consideration because I'm not going to go into saying anything big about you know car crashes I'm just going to say it, whenever you get behind a wheel drive safely as a person that drives myself I exercise caution all the time now I don't necessarily always obey the speed limit I will be honest but I do definitely try to use my ju better judgment I do try to drive cautiously and I do try to basically watch my back because this is a dangerous world we live in and if you live in California, especially Northern California, it's an even more dangerous world. Because, frankly, Californians are not exactly the best drivers. I speak from knowledge because I've been to New York, I've been to Maryland, I've been all over this this country pretty, you know, with, I was all over this country this past winter, and frankly, I came back to California, and I'm just like, these are the worst fucking drivers imaginable. And I'm not going to say I'm the best either, but it's just exercise your caution and your better judgment, folks, whenever you get out on the road. Don't text and drive. Don't talk on your cell phone. Put them away. Unless it's an absolute emergency, then pull over to the side of the road. Do not continue to... to Put your life and other people's lives in jeopardy. If you're, you know, you know, exercise caution and watch your speed. Because, you know, I know this is all sounding like bourgeois, you know, cliche and stuff like that bull crap and a PSA from a, you know, fucking coercive arm of the state, you know, sort of thing. But it really does, folks. It's one of those things that you have families that love you. You have, you know, 
lives and stuff like that to live and you know being reckless and exercising poor judgment should not be the reason that you perish from this earth you know it's really sad when I have to see articles of young children and teenagers and young adults t you know who have been shot or have been in car crashes or drank themselves or overdosed or any sort of, sort of thing like that that basically ended their lives that you know even down to when people commit suicide you know it, it pains me when I have to see those articles and frankly it pains me that you know it pains me if it, it, it will greatly pain me whether I know you or not if I end up having to do a video and your name comes across as one of the perished people it's sad anytime I have to do a video on death it's sad when I have to do any sort of topic that deals with death whether it's the deaths of Palestinians at the hand of, hands of Israelis or whether it's a high school student that dies in a car crash I hate having to deal with those because it just simply comes down to better judgment and just essentially use being able to you know it comes down to essentially better judgment in the fact that these incidences can be prevented that death can be prevented you know the only thing that can't that we can't prevent happening to us when it comes to death is old age and sickness that's really the only thing that can really truly kill us but if we let other influences you know contribute to our early graves then we have truly lost it as a society as a civilization at the end of the day all I can say is learn to be more careful learn to be cautious but also learn to take risks but make sure that those risks do not involve the potential for life-threatening behaviors that they don't pose a threat to your life or limb when it comes down to other events that I've even talked about in this video just exercise better judgment educate yourself and learn to definitely live day to day with knowledge with good will with good intentions and good judgment because you can prevent because you have the power you you the people we the people have the power to prevent death we have the power to prevent atrocities we have the power to bring peace and once we can all come together as a unit as a people and understand that we are all equal that we all have the power to create peace create diplomatic dialogue and just in general right down to society in trying to you know solve each other's problems without the use of violence or use better judgment that won't cost our, us our lives that's when we can actually begin moving together as a civilization into a new era and just frankly I, I'm you know I just have a lot of faith in the people I guess which is really hard but you gotta have faith in the people when it, when it seems like all hope is lost 
anyway, enough of my blithering idiocy trying to figure out where to end here. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner for this week. Peace, guys. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine.